Hello everybody, welcome to the United Stands. I'm Mark Goldbridge. This is a reaction to Manchester United losing 3-0 to Bournemouth. Although I have done a review and they can have the fourth goal, so VAR can do one. Um, look, the, the, so much to talk about. Absolutely not shocking, but arse handed on a plate at Old Trafford. We've lost to Palace at home, Brighton at home, Bournemouth at home. I mean, for fuck's sake, it's it's incredible. But the thing, the question I have to say here, the place I'm going to start off with, and I'm going to go in on Ten Hag. I mean, I am going to go in on him because the McTominay thing is baffling to me and the Varane thing is baffling to me. But the core problem at Manchester United is the players. I cannot, for the life of me, and maybe some of you can explain to me, I don't understand how Manchester United can go to Manchester City be 2-0 down at half-time, City are going to win the league and Manchester United come back in the second half and win 3-2. Then the following week, they lose at home to West Brom who are going to get relegated. That's not this season. This was a few seasons ago. Because it's been going on for fucking years. How do Manchester United play brilliantly against Chelsea and then three days later against Bournemouth play absolute shite and I mentioned that Man City West Brom theme because this has been going on for fucking years. We can play amazingly well in one game and then the next game be absolute shite. And you know what it is? It's not about Oli. It's not about Mourinho. It's not about Ranić, And it's not about Ten Hag. It's about the core crooks of this squad being completely unsuitable for Manchester United and what it stands for. They cannot be consistent. You've got Scott McTominay on Wednesday night, the hero, two goals. Everybody's given him praise, quite rightly. Comes into the game today and plays fucking rubbish. And you go, how can you play badly when everybody is praising you? You deservedly start the game, which is not the normal case. And then you, put, you, you play shit. Harry Maguire, player of the month, plays shit. Luke Shaw, brilliant on Wednesday, shit. Bruno Fernandes, captain of the team, shit. How do we, how does this happen? Why does this happen? Why is it we can switch it on and switch it off? Marcus Rashford comes on off the bench, running around like his life depends on it. Like if he stops running, he's literally going to get, you know, have to retire. But for the last three months, won't do it. How can you succeed as a manager or as a football fan at this club when you've got a bunch of players who inexplicably cannot be asked but can switch it on and off? It's a mentality thing. They're not consistent. They're just very inconsistent players. We said it before, didn't we, about McTominay. You can say it about the whole team. They are a bag of Revels. I think Paul Merson said it. You never know what you're going to get. Coffee, orange, caramel, Malteser. You just don't know what you're going to get. And I tell you what, the Glazers couldn't fucking run a bath. But if Sir Jim Radcliffe's coming in with Sir David Brailsford and Blanc and everyone else like that, you've got to clear this squad out. You know, I saw this morning about new new contracts for Lindelof and Martial and wan -Bissaka. No fucking new contracts. No new contracts. They've got to go. Not just those players. They've all got to go. Nobody is consistent. The only players I'd stick with are probably Ten Hag signings because, you know, they're the most recent players. But there's players who've been here for fucking years. Years they've been here and they still do the same thing. I'm tired of it. I'm absolutely tired of it. I've never known a team so confusingly inconsistent. They will probably beat Bayern on Tuesday. Like, I, I say it with complete and utter conviction. We'll probably beat Bayern on Tuesday because we will play like we did against Chelsea. And then we'll go to Liverpool and we'll get beat 6-0. I, I genuinely think that will happen. I know there's people in the chat saying, sack the manager, do this, that and the other. I, I, on that, look, on that, I will say this. Ten Hag cannot be sacked. He cannot be sacked. We're three points off fourth. He's just one manager of the month. I think we've won, you know, five of our last... Look, he can't be sacked. He can't be sacked. The, the form is not bad enough to sack the manager. You might want it. You might at the beginning of the end. I accept that. I know I was getting moody on the watch along, but look, I'm living it live just like you are. I get the fact that some people want Ten Hag to be sacked. I respect it in the sense that that's your right. But let's get real on two things on, on Ten Hag. 
One, you can't sack a manager that's three points off fourth place in December. You just can't do it. That's not right. We're not that club. We haven't won a title in 10 years, so we can't sack a manager with three points off fourth place. What I'm saying is it's got to get worse before you sack him. So he's not sackable at the moment, in my opinion. And two, what are you going to do if you do sack him? Who's going to come in in December? Because it can't be fucking Steve McLaren and Darren Fletcher. And also, if you do sack him, how do you afford to sack him? How do you afford to replace him? And what do you do with the £400 million of players he's just bought in the last 18 months? You're just creating Mission Impossible for the next manager who will be here for two years and then you'll want to sack him. At some point, and we've had this conversation when we're less emotional, at some point, we've got to look at these problems and say... They're not new problems, which is why I mentioned 2-0 down at the Etihad, win 3-2 in the second half and then lose to West Brom at home the next week. We've been doing this for years. This is not new. It's not nice to lose to Bournemouth, but it's not new. It happened under Mourinho. It happened under Van Hal. It happened under Oli. It happened under Ranić. It's been happening for years. We need to stop acting like this is a surprise. Oh, we're Manchester United. This shouldn't happen. Gary, what are we? We're Manchester United. No, it's been happening for years. This is what we do. We are consistently inconsistent. And there are still some people in our fan base who'll go, get him out, get the manager out, fucking fraud, doesn't know what he's doing, get him out. And I go, hold on a minute, should we should we look at the season review from two years ago under Ollie? Should we go back to the Mourinho one? Should we go back to Van Hal? Should we go back to Moyes? Or do you fancy a bit of Ranić tonight? We This is what we do. Every right to be angry about it. It's very, very frustrating. But this is what we do. And what we need to do in these moments of frustration and emotion and despair is look at how we solve it. Because we can't just be the fan base who keep going, get the Norwich scarves out, get the manager out, let's have a protest. You know, we've done all these things and still it keeps happening. What needs to happen is if Sir Jim Radcliffe's going to come in and make a difference, he needs to just not react like everybody else has reacted over the last few years. I would stick with Ten Hag and have a big fucking word about with him. I'll tell you why in a minute. I would stick with Ten Hag, but I would say to him, do you want to keep all these players? And if he says yes, get rid of him. But if he says no, I know I need to get rid of them, but the Glazers wouldn't do it. I'd say, right, let's fucking do it. Let's get rid of these players. I don't, look, let's take Victor Lindelof. Get rid of him. Not a bad player, but not good enough. Get rid of him. Martial, get rid of him. wan get rid of him. Get McTominay, get rid of him. Maguire, get rid of him. Like, just... You need to clear. Some of them are playing well for us at the moment. Some of them are good lads. But if we want to get, if we want to compete with Arsenal and Liverpool and Man City, we need to clear that team out. Even the good players. I mean, maybe even Bruno's up for a shout because it's mentality. Some of these players are really good players, but mentally they're not. They're, they can play really well and really shit. Like Bruno was rubbish tonight and he's got himself booked. So I'm not just talking about ability. The thing that I'm talking about tonight that massively frustrates me is, it's the mentality. I don't understand the mentality. I don't understand how you can play like that on Wednesday and play like that on the Saturday. Some footballers are brilliant footballers, but weak mentally. Some footballers are brilliant footballers, but they're not consistent. Manchester United play, you get Roy Keane, you get Nicky Butt, you get Paul Ince, ask them what a Man United player is and they'd say, a Man United player is a talented player who plays well every week. Well, there ended the lesson. We've got talented players who don't play well every week. We've got crap players who aren't good enough. Get rid of them, clear it out. Now, as for Ten Hag, before I do the player ratings, I've got to say this and I've been saying this and I, you know I said it, you know I said it, and, and some of you agreed with me. I said it after the game with Chelsea. I said, Scott McTominay deserves man of the match, and he got man of the match, and he deserves man of the match. But what I said was, I worry about how we are building that midfield at the moment. I worry how we're playing that midfield at the moment, because Amrabat gets left on his own. We saw it with Newcastle last week. Menu gets left on his own. Casemiro at the start of the season... We see them get left on their own all the fucking time and the midfield gets overrun and the defence get overrun and everybody breaks on us and this is how we concede goals and you keep McTominay and Bruno in the team and Bruno wants to attack and McTominay wants to attack. Bruno's better than McTominay so McTominay needs to get dropped because in the modern game you can't just have one midfielder on their own and two of them going forward. And we saw what happens with McTominay today which is what has happened at Newcastle. If he doesn't score a goal, he's shit. Basically, if McTominay doesn't score, there's nothing else. 
Now, Rory Delap at Stoke with his big throw-ins, they're Stoke. It's worth just having a specialist. But at Manchester United and a top four team, you can't just pick a player because he scores goals in the midfield. He's got to be able to pass, tackle and influence. And he doesn't do it. He can't be... And, and, and Ten Hag kept him on all fucking game. He should have took him off at half time. Ten Hag's obsession with this midfield is fucking destroying us. He's keeping a player in because he scores a couple of goals against Brentford and Chelsea. But he's also the reason we keep conceding goals. Our midfield is completely and utterly fucked. It's imbalanced. Amrabat, Mainu, Casemiro, whoever's your holding midfielder, is absolutely being hung out to dry. We need two midfielders. Amrabat and Mainu. Amrabat and fucking somebody else. I don't care. But you need two midfielders. Now, against at Anfield, it might fucking work because Bruno's suspended. So play McTominay as the 10 and play Amrabat and Mainu. It might fucking work. But I couldn't believe he kept... McTominay on for so long today when he was shit. He was absolute shit. You know, he's back to being that rabbit dropping in a bag of Maltesers. You know he's there, but you don't know which one he is. He, he, he was shit. So we're Manchester United. I feel like Gary Neville. We're Manchester United. We can't just pick a player because he's good at arriving late in the box and scoring. Because he, did, he didn't score today. So he has a shit game. You've got... This is the problem with Manchester United. We've got too many players who aren't Man United players. And it's a hell of a lot of work. It's a hell of a lot of way back. But look, Ten Hag pissed me off about that because he didn't sub him off the whole game. And I'm like, the midfield's the fucking problem. I know Martial didn't play particularly well. I thought Anthony was good. Uh, I thought Ganacho was okay. Um, you know, Rasmus didn't really do a lot when he came on, but there's not a lot of service. Bruno was terrible. McTominay was terrible. Amrabat's overrun. You know, it was a mess. It was an absolute wet mess. Aaron Wambasaka plays well 90% of the time. I'm so tired of this slander, says Reckon. Um, Mark, I think, yeah, but I think, I think Delo and Anthony work better than Wambasaka and Anthony. I think that's why he did it. I think Varane undermined Ten Hag just like Sancho, but not publicly, so he's being benched as pizza. I love Bruno, but that yellow is a disgrace. You're the captain. Don't be so petulant when you know you'd be banned for Liverpool. He's getting mad. He's made a massive, yeah, he has. He's made a massive mistake there. Ten Hag has made bad decisions, but before we sack another manager, we need to get rid of these players. I don't feel he's the right uh, man, but players first, says Sirim. Uh, Premier League manager of the month, says Parisa. Look, can I just remind you of the week we've had as well? Let me just remind you, the Chelsea game masked it. What happened on Monday? Certain people within that football club leaked against the manager. It's not gone away. That performance today sort of fits with the leaks on Monday. The Chelsea game doesn't make any sense. But that performance today fits with player power turning on the manager. So, look, I'm sick to the back teeth of this playing squad. They can't be trusted. They're inconsistent. You don't need to individualise it because some of the players are good lads. But as a gen... Look, if, if you're a good player in that United dressing room, well done. I'm not calling you out. But collectively, you are being poisoned by the dressing room. The dressing room is toxic. It's not good enough. And it's not acceptable. And on Wednesday night, we saw a reaction. And then today, we saw the same old shit. I think we'll beat Bayern on Tuesday. I think we'll see a reaction. But... Anfield at the weekend will probably get battered again. It's it's going to be what I said after Chelsea. It's going to be a long, hard season. It's going to be a really hard grind. We'll have ups. I said it after Chelsea, didn't I, to be fair? I said, this is a high. There'll be losses before Christmas. It literally happened three days ago. And all I can say at the moment is, enjoy the wins because you know there's something shit coming very soon. And also, with the defeats, don't go to town too much because you'll look an idiot when we win again. Mark, you said we'd find out who wants to hide against Liverpool by not making themselves available. Does this apply to Bruno, says Guna? Well, maybe Bruno didn't fancy it. Mate, I'm not scared to call people out. Maybe Bruno didn't fancy Anfield. Maybe he knows exactly what's going to happen. Maybe he didn't want Gary Neville saying he's not trying on live TV again. I don't know. Everyone's saying Eric Ten Hag out, but who is out there to replace him, says Luke. Uh, yes, his choices of team has costed us at times, but the players need a good look in the mirror, says Luke. And we are not going anywhere with this manager. Get out of our sunken... Uh, it's the manager who's selecting the players. Aravanda, you don't know nothing about football, I'm sorry. Mark, Chelsea were awful against United. Bournemouth are better. United are average at best, says David. And when the commentators give a stat about how the team we're playing haven't won at Old Trafford, I know it's going to be a long game, says Nick. And the reason I'm going to come back at Aravand and say he doesn't know anything about football is because I've watched thousands of games in my life and I watched Chelsea and Bournemouth and I would challenge anybody, ex-player, pundit, manager, fan, I will challenge anybody to come back at me on this. 
How is it the manager's fault when he picks a team on Wednesday and they do everything he asks them to do? And then he picks the same team on Saturday and they do nothing like they did on Wednesday. I've been a manager. I've watched games. I've been a fan with you. I cannot get my head around that. And people want to put it on the manager, but it's not on the manager because it happened under Mourinho. It happened under Van Gaal. It happened under Oli. One week, they're fucking fantastic. Three days later, they're shit. That's not on the manager. It's on the players. They just... There's something in them that can't be consistent. Look at Rashford when he came on. He's chasing everything. Everything because he's got a point to prove. The last four months, he's chased nothing. Newcastle last week, he wouldn't track back. Today, he's running around. Why is it that these players can switch it on when they fucking want to? Man City players switch it on every fucking game. So do Arsenal. So do Liverpool. Why do Man United players decide when to switch it on or off? And that is the problem here. You can say Ten Hag out, but you cannot. You, you can prep a team, you can send it out, but you can't do anything once the whistle blows. If they want it, you're fine. If they don't want it, you're fucked. And today they just didn't want it. And I don't know why. I don't know what it is. Were they worried that they beat Chelsea and Ten Hag's going to stay? Oh, we're fucking, we've made a right mistake there. We need to, you know, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. And I'm not, I'm not going to individualise it, but... Luke Shaw was fantastic on Wednesday. Shit tonight. Bruno was fantastic on Wednesday. Shit tonight. Rashford's been not very good for months. Comes on, puts, runs up, runs all over the place. Inconsistency is absolutely killing us. Right, let's do the player ratings. Um, fuck knows. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm going to go and watch Villa Arsenal after this. You've got the fan forum as well. Um, Anana just ain't good enough. He's just not good enough. He's not good enough. I don't think he's massively at fault for any of the goals, but he's not good enough. Lucas says he's poor. Um, uh, who's at fault is that? And making one or two changes in this team is not going to resolve the issue. We as fans have said for years, this squad needs thing and thing out, so slow sports news. Got nothing left with that, but I'm back next week. This team has uh, done our heads in, says Ray Carl. And uh, Ten Hag has to realise that picking McTominay and keeping Varane on the bench is going to cost him his job. I don't disagree with you, Etik. Um, Varane, and, uh, Varane needs to play. Um, and um, he needs to put two midfielders. He needs Amrabat and Menu, and he may as well do it on on Tuesday night. Stop defending him, Shaw instead of Varane. Oh, shut up, Sheriff. I mean, I'm bored of repeating the same thing. Shaw instead of Varane. Shaw instead of Varane. That's why we lost the game. Moaning. What are you talking about? Luke Shaw played left centre-back most of last season from Christmas and was brilliant. He's had a shit game tonight, and these genius bloody coaches are going... Shaw, Shaw at left back. Shaw at left back. That's the problem. Luke Shaw at left back. It's a fucking disgrace. Luke Shaw at left centre back. What's he doing? Luke Shaw at left centre back in January. Fucking brilliant. Luke Shaw at the end of the season at left centre back around May. Fucking brilliant. He's had a bad game. Luke Shaw second off against Chelsea. Fucking brilliant. Luke Shaw should be left centre back. I think he should. I think he, I think Luke Shaw should be left centre back. But he had a shit game today. Uh, the low, I don't know. I don't even, I don't even know what to give them because I know what's going to happen. Three, I don't know. Maguire, four, I don't know. Luke Shaw, four. Regulon, three. Amrabat, five. McTominay, two. Uh, Bruno, three. Anthony, six. Man of the match. I don't know why he's got a low score. I don't know why. I don't know why Anthony's got a low score. I don't know. I don't know what Anthony did wrong today. I, I genuinely don't know what he did wrong. I think he's been so uh, standout player by a long way. Um, attitude, uh, retention of the ball, effort. Look, I don't think Anthony put a foot wrong today for me. I really don't. Ganacho probably a five. Uh, Martial three. Hoyland five. Um, Evans didn't even know you came on. Well, well. so Evans came on instead of Iran. Fucking hell. I don't know what's that. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'll be honest, that, that one stings. Is, I, I, you know, I, I'm just fucking stunned, to be honest with you. Uh, Johnny Evans, um, I don't I don't know. I don't even know. I'll give him a four. I don't know. Palestri, four, and then Rashford. Well, he ran about a bit. Give him a five. Um, shame he didn't do it for the last four months. Might be in a different position. I mean, but 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 you know what? I don't want to individualise it. But Marcus Rashford, 
never stop running for 10 minutes and yet can't do it for the last four months. I think that represents the problem at United, not Rashford, but that represent that cameo from Rashford represents the problem with Manchester United. He literally reflects Man United in that performance. He comes on with a point to prove for 10 minutes and never stops running, but then for the last four months won't do it. That's the problem. There is something mentally in that United team that downs tools and then picks them up again and fights and then drops them. And you you know, it must be a it must be so frustrating to coach these players because Ten Hag will be thinking after Wednesday, oh, we've got a really good spirit, you know, we're fighting. And then they just, there's no reason to drop, to down your tools and not put the effort in. But he literally said it in the press conference yesterday. You've got to be sharp. You've got to give 100% because in this league, anybody can kill you. And then they don't turn up. It's, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. I just do not understand it. And, um, um, yeah. Uh, what would I give Ten Hag today? Well, he's just been beat 3-0 by Bournemouth at home. I can't I can't give him a good score. I can't. Um I really can't. Um 50% for Anthony uh for Anthony. I'm interested to see. I mean <sighs> Rasmus got a few, Ganacho got a few. Yeah, it's uh, it's not good. Um, it's not it's not good uh, from Manchester United at all. Um, look, we've got the fan forum coming up, and uh, you can have your say on there. I think I've said I know it's not as long as it normally is, but I think I've said everything I would like to say. He's dropping players like Sancho, Varane, Casemiro, who will get the team better results. This is an example of putting himself in front of the club, and no one should come before the club. Chris, he's not dropping Sancho. Jaden Sancho put a fucking tweet out slagging off the manager and the coaches and disrespecting the club. That's not... Come on. You're, you, you're angry. Calm down. Calm down and listen to what I said at the start. These players have been doing this for years. They're inexplicably inconsistent. If they don't go out and put the performance in... All right, let's sack, let's sack Ten Hag and replace him. They play well for three games for McLaren or whoever else. And then the next game, inexplicably, we get beat by, I don't know, Brighton. It's going to keep happening until we get rid of the players. Recruitment needs to be better with homework done on players and mentality. No manager in this world is getting anything better from that squad. No one. They consistently cannot do it. Bottom line, end of the day, whatever you want to say literally cannot do a better job than what they've done over the last few years. They are what they are. They're just not good enough. Anyway, I've had my say. Let's see what they've got to say on the fan forum. You know, we're always open for other opinions and I'm sure people will have different opinions on the fan forum. I'm going to go and watch Villa Arsenal. Speak to you all in a bit. And I'm on Talk Sport at half seven if you want to call in.